Ho ho, me hearties! A very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, and here we are live on Thursday evening with the internet phone in. How amazing is that? Welcome, 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 I say. Lovely to have you with us, and dinky do. Time is nine o'clock, Thursday evening, Thursday the 2nd of December, 2021. I can't believe how fast everything is moving. I shall say good evening, everyone in the chat, and you can come and join me. Fantastic stuff. Evening, Scotty. How are we today? Drewski, out in uh, the north of America. Dinky do. Drewski, I was thinking Detroit was the place that was springing to mind. Are you very far from Detroit? There we are. I know it used to be the center of the car industry, and it's had a tough time, but I'd quite like to go to Detroit. It looks as if it's actually very beautiful in its setting. Hi, Scotty, says Sandy. Dinky do, Sandy. I'm three hours from Detroit. Well, that's not too bad, Drewski. Is that three hours driving? Yes, indeed. Fantastic stuff. Have you been? You're late, Scotty. Wrong, numpty head. We are never late. Any more of that and you'll get a lifetime ban. In fact, we were actually a bit early tonight. So you need to get your act together, numpty head. What you mean is you joined us late. Yes, now we're talking. There we are. Fantastic. McClue is never, ever late. Good evening, Scotty. Thank you, do. Unless, of course, it's a technical thing, but McClue's never late. Good evening, Scotty. Says, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Lovely to have you with us. And a big thank you, do. Evening. Says, Haldy. Haldy Pottinger. Top man. Yes. Driving. Have been to Detroit quite a few times. They've done the city quite nicely. So I know I'd had a tough time. Been through a bit of a recession after the motor industry. Evening, Scotty, your friend Long John here. Great to see you again and great to be back. Long John Terry, lovely to have you back. Kareem says, dinky do. Hi, Scotty and Kareem. Hello, Susan. How lovely to have you with us. I'm just going to check the phones in case anybody wants to give us a buzz. There we are. I know Kareem likes to phone. Good evening from Inverkip, says Shugley, Shugley. We love Inverkit on here. And dinky do, I say. Who's this? You're live on Scotty's for a name? Dinky do, it's Kareem Scotty. Dinky do, Kareem. Lovely to hear you. Well done. You got through <laughs> right away. Thank you very Had much. Had you Scotty. tried before, Kareem? I did, yes. So the lines are maybe acting up a little bit at the start. Right. And Glenn, Glenn in, in Sheffield says he tried to ring us. Right. It was just coming up the person that you're trying to contact. Obviously, I cannot get contacted. Yeah. And then the lines opened, so they were fine. Well, I had the same thing. I went to ring Alex Belfield last night to give him a piece of my mind. Right. Uh, and um, <laughs> I, uh, it, his was doing the same, so I think it just gets overloaded. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. There's Keychin, and it did downtown. It was a very scary place. They've done a lot of work and invested a lot. Uh, we're talking about Detroit in uh, North America. Right, lovely. Yeah, the home of the uh, Henry Ford's office. And then apparently yeah. it was just sort of open to the to the, the weather, you know? Yes. Well, mentioning over in America, Scotty, see the, the next elections when they come up in America? Yeah. Um, do you think a, Trump will run for it? And if he did run for it and wins... Technically, could he serve another two terms? Yes, just, yes, as yeah. far as I know, if he's fit and well, there's no reason uh -huh. why he wouldn't run. I think he will run. I think when everything shook down, I mean, we were getting a bit fed up with Donald, but I think that was the media painting him as the baddie. Uh -huh. And in actual fact, I think you might find that Donald is a goodie and that, uh, you know, he's been kind of edged out at the moment. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I think I think the world might be in safer hands with the Donald. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. No, that's quite interesting. So that would be the first time, would it not, Scotty, that for talk's sake, if someone was voted out, then he was voted back in, and then he could win another term after Well, that. Um, I'm just trying to think who else was in, in America. You know, I mean, we did it with Churchill. We had him in, was it three times? Wilson, uh -huh. Wilson yes. was in a couple of times. 
you know? be interesting to see if Jade, that's Jade says, <laughs> I love it when you have a chat with that Alex creature. Uh, There's right. Professor right. Numpty Head, who was cheeking up to me about being late when we're actually early tonight. Scotty, do you uh, know what the MG stands for in MG Motors? Yes, Numpty Head. It stands for Morris Garages. So uh, it was a hybrid of Morris Motors, William Morris from Oxford, who started with a uh, bicycle shop, providing bicycles to the students, and then he got involved in motor cars. And, of course, he did these lovely Morris cars, which were very solid little characters, great, very reliable cars, including the Morris Minor, the Morris 8, you know, all that sort of stuff, and uh, the Morris Oxford. And he was based in Oxford. He became Lord Nuffield. And uh -huh. then also as, uh, you know, aside of that, they started Morris Garages and used to suit uh -huh. the little Morrises up with an extra carburetor and a few more uh -huh. CCs. Did he still do the MG cars? Yeah, I, yeah there, there are MG cars for sale, but I don't quite know who's behind it all. Right, so they another company. Well, it became MG Rover. Rover, and then these guys turned over the Rover company, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Um, did you get your heating fix, Scotty? I yes, you yes, it's roasting hot tonight, uh, you know, but um, I don't want to put it off just now because the engineer's going to check there's something, some little thing playing a trick. So he's just going to oh, check what's playing a trick. Right, okay. Not you know, you see, we used to have this in television. <laughs> and some nights, do you remember the announcers used to apologise when the film broke down? Yes. So say it was Bridge Over the River Kwai. Up would come a slide with a caption saying Bridge Over the River Kwai. And the duty announcer, very often myself, would pop up and say, and I'm sorry we seem to have lost our movie this evening. We'll certainly do everything we can to get it back for you as soon as possible. Meantime, here's some music. And we'd play some nice, relaxing music that would keep the listener, or the viewer, I should say, interested for a, for a minute or two, till we sorted it. Now, film was very valuable. And when they sent the film out to the companies, you had to look after it because celluloid could scratch. And you these right. wonderful machines called telecine machines. And if a piece of dust got in, rather than scratch the film, the machine would stop. Oh, right. So if somebody, you know, hadn't made sure the film was absolutely dust-free, the machine would stop and the telly would stop. And, of course, it threw everything because ITV runs to the exact second. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, so you had to sort out all the time. Wow. Well. Okay, that's interesting, Scotty. Well, that, yeah, yeah, so there, there's a wee bit of something. Here's Keith Sneddon sending me five pounds. Excellent. Character holding what? their head in their hands saying, you're my number one. Keith, what a lovely thing to do. Thank you. Yes. What's that for, Scotty? Oh, it's wonderful. My dad had an Austin Cambridge. It was like a tank, says David. <laughs> Well, as I said, I think we spoke before, I like the card I've got and I think I'll stick with the mate um, as Peugeot. I think yes. it's been really good so far. Lovely, solid French car maker. Very comfortable to sit in. Scott, they I'm always were. Good. The French were very, very good. They weren't great in the early days because they had better weather. Their body uh -huh. work wasn't really of the best. So right. you had to chase okay. the body work, but the cars themselves were quite outstanding. Uh, Peugeot, Citroën. You see, Citroën brought out in the 30s, I think, Traction Avant, which you'll know from your French experience means front wheel drive. You see, Traction Avant. And they had the Citroën Light 15. You know? So, 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 so you that sort of thing. And they were beautiful cars. And then you had the DS. DS Palace uh -huh. and DS is Deus and Deus is God in Latin or Greek. Uh -huh. <coughs> the Deus. So the, the Citroen Deus and they were very smooth and their suspension was so advanced. Right. So you were you were you know riding on air. <laughs> riding on pneumatic yeah. suspension, well, beautiful stuff. I, I think just now is I think is it that Peugeot own 
Um, I'm not sure about Renault. I think Renault and, and Nissan. Um, Renault own Nissan, actually, sorry. Yes. The Renaults were you know, very, very smooth cars as well. There was a beauty called a Renault 17 with a column change and a bench seat. And it was a lovely, lovely car. But they were popular, weren't they? I think I remember that car. Oh, was yes, boy. there wasn't a sound out there. And when I was young, there was a little Renault called the Dauphin with a little right. rear engine. Right. Citroen right. Dauphin. Eh, sorry, Renault Dauphin. Right. And I had the Citroen Amy 8 estate car. Uh, right. Lovely right. things. You could throw them about in the road. <laughs> Well, I, I, as I said, I think I'll stick with my, my usual. No idea what to get next, but it's amazing how cars just change, you know, like they have a, a model out for a certain amount of years, they revamp it, and then it's like a total different car after that when they go for a new system. You well, Peugeot, if you had a family, Peugeot used to do a lovely thing called a 504 saloon yeah. or an estate. And a 504 estate, I think it even had little rear-facing back seats for extra children. Well, yeah. yeah. Lovely big oh, thing. Beautiful colours 